Welcome back to another episode of the Hustler Squad podcast. This was filmed on June 15. It's actually part two. Go and listen to the previous one if you haven't listened to that. In this episode, the boys and myself absolutely get stuck into the AFL and a whole heap of ex-AFL players again after they filmed a disgusting ad with Sportsbet. We also talk about how Sportsbet are manipulating and hypnotizing Australians to keep gambling. And we finally talk about some frequently asked questions to help any new people who want to get involved with the system to help understand how it all works. If you have any questions whatsoever, DM us on Instagram or check the links in the description. Yeah, so that brings us next. We, we, we rinsed Goddard, Corns, all those blokes last podcast, and we're going to keep going after you guys. So be beware. If you want to be Daisy an affiliate, Thomas has blocked us. Dale Thomas blocked us. So shout out to Daisy. You didn't block Hustler though, so maybe block that too. <laughs> um, shout out to those guys. But if you are an affiliate and you're an ex-AFL or an ex-sportswoman or whatever, um, I think Georgie Parker, she's an ex-hockey, is it? I actually had yeah. to Google what yeah, she yeah, was yeah, before because yeah. she, she always has a sports bet with Olymp- Nathan Brown. Olympian, I think. The uh, Back Pocket podcast where they t- t- tell people how to don- donate their money every week on a Friday. Um, basically, those guys, if you're going to keep doing this, and great, you're filling your pockets, you are going to get rinsed for the next 12 months <laughs> until we do something about it. And ABC has actually rinsed yeah. them. Tony Jones, Damien Barrett, McClure. Um, that little pod thing they the did. The thing is, yeah, but with those guys, Take I, corn, I don't, don't forget about those it. Those guys, it's not. It's uh, for me personally. I don't have as much of an issue with them doing it purely because they're doing it to get publicity yeah, and, Steve does. and and they're but they're <laughs> but they're like they're nobodies, right? They don't have they don't have a following. They're not worshipped by young kids, right? Yeah. The person that, that in that ad, for example, that is the worst is Kane Corns, and I don't know what. And I know I've already had a go at Kane Corns, but I don't know what he's actually thinking. He's, right? a, he's a smart guy. Of course he is. He's but, a genius. And he's done so many, like, you know, he's run a marathon for charity, yeah. raised money for really good things. Like, he, he, you know, he's a guy that understands his influence and has used it for, like, so many positive things. But to use your influence to, like, he's got four young boys or something. Do you reckon he's sitting at home telling them to start punting when no. they're 18? So why why is he doing that? publicly I honestly think they don't have a clue how much people lose well, I, I think Barrett it has to be say that. in his podcast he's like surely this has you know yeah. like this has yeah no, this, it's pretty this, harmless this, isn't yeah, it? there's little yeah. harm there and it's like bro we you know australians gamble the most per capita in no. the world how much is that take? Pay- average 990 dollars yeah. loss no more per it's 1200 per adult yeah per adult sorry whatever yeah. and that's and if you like think about it realistically 50 percent of the adult market is female and majority of them don't bet yeah. or can't even get bets on at half the bookies yeah, because We're they're talking instantly about restricted. The, yeah. the, when they talk about the per capita number, it's so skewed because yeah. it's not. There's not 12 million people betting or no. 25 million people betting. There's there's four or five million males yeah, so from, it's higher from 18 to 45. So they're not losing 1,200 yeah. per capita yeah, from the betting market. It, yeah. it's, it literally quadruples it. They're losing 5k. Yeah, and the rest. And it's but, a massive, massive issue. Like, and the fact that. They think it's pretty harmless, or they, you know, they get 10k for doing the ad. They don't give a fuck. No, that's not no. good enough, though. That's no, not, it's shit ass. I agree with you. Like I'm on it's, your side. it's, it's all, it's okay to say, oh well, maybe they just don't quite understand how bad gambling is. Rah, rah, rah. bullshit, mate. They're all like 40, 45 year old males. Yeah, they're not. They've stupid. all grown up in the industry. They've all heard stories, and if they still are somehow naive or ignorant to it all, then that's not good enough. No. Nah. They're journalists. They're in the media. They've got, you know, a following. And they've got a big pool. They've got a big say, and they're promoting it. So that's that's piss poor journalism. That's, yeah, for them. Tony Jones has been on record to say something. What was he saying about gambling on that web? On that yeah, well, he video. was saying you know like we know the harms of drinking, we know the harms yeah. of drug use, but we don't know the harms of gambling. Yeah. He's saying it was ruining lives. Though, I reckon. Yeah, well, he was. They wanted to change. That's yeah. what, and then he's the doing a fucking podcast, uh, a sports bet ad. Just come on, man! Like yeah. it just makes it, it to me. It just looks like they're just the flavor of the month yeah. and whatever is popular at the time. Yeah, put, a few years put ago, 10K in your pocket. Doesn't exactly matter what happens are. from it, move on. Well, but. a few years ago, there was the big sort of push for play the odds or play the sport, not the odds sort of yeah. thing. And so, yeah, not 2019, Tony Jones came out and did he spiel? Barrett's done his spiel. McClure did he spiel in the past couple of years saying we need to ban this. The government needs to get involved. We need to change legislation, whatever it may be. And now all of a sudden, because everyone's promoting gambling, all the big ex-AFL yeah. players are doing it. Oh, now they want their pace yeah. in the pie as well. And so now they're jumping on board. Shit house. Uh, Stick yeah. to one or the other. Legit. Like either be a degenerate or defend, like Correct. don't don't go and promote it. Don't okay. play both sides and clickbait yourselves to, yeah. I don't know. Shane Crawford's just been started to do one for Tab. I've screen recorded one the other day. I'm going to do a little stitch on that because he's another smart bloke. But I think, I think they're just thinking about their own pockets. 100%. And 
it's not good enough, as you said. Um, and well, did you see in that ABC video, they reached out to Sportsbet, they reached out to the individuals involved, they reached out to everyone asking, no reply. was there any payment involved? And they all just got seamed. Yeah. Yeah, didn't want to give them a bar. Of course they got paid. 100% they got paid. Bro, Sportsbet, I think, paying the AFL or vice versa, like $8 million a year or something. Yeah, it was $8 million, It's on yeah. the fucking AFL app, man. You go into the tips for the week, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sportsbet all odds the are on everything. Yeah, they're on the It's like, page. what the fuck? Yeah. Like, a 10 year old can access that app well, and they see these odds and they're like what's that and then they ask their dad and then their dad's probably donating as well to the bookies <laughs> around the you know and like you're watching the game and every yeah. single sign is posted you know, bet 365 bet 365 sports bet sports bet sports it's bet it's genuine the ad fucked. comes up and Nathan Brown's got a same game multi for the game that's coming up or he's got a dead set lock I love, I love Mick game. Malloy like, he does it on the front bar mix yeah. multi or something another one trying to fill his pockets oh man I, I'd love if you're an ex AFL and you disagree with this shit we want to get someone on who can go the other way if you've got balls to do it I know a lot of people just want to be quiet but we're going to find someone eventually who yeah. will go on record we'd love to reach out like David Schwartz for example he's one that we'd love to get on um, Nick Rewalt I mean you, you're close with all these boys I saw you, you reached out you, you reached out yeah, Nick well, Rewalt I, obviously that's a you know that's a bit of a throw at the stumps but <laughs> you know when you think of the you know the model citizen or the model ex AFL yeah. player yeah. like Nathan I was just Buckley, curious probably. I was just curious to know like from um, like Rui's perspective you know he was like best mates with Brennan Goddard and Goddard captain an AFL club you know Seems like a pretty upstanding guy who the last thing you would think of doing. Yeah, he's a dad Sitting too. at a sport, yeah. And you'd think he's, what, sitting on a sports bed ad. Well, I imagine. Telling, telling yeah. you about some some bloke that's a lock to get 20 disposals. He wouldn't He wouldn't, have, he wouldn't know what day it is. Like, <laughs> well, what, I imagine, what, what's he doing giving out betting advice? Yeah. I imagine Daisy Thomas would have played in a premiership with Dane Beams. Yeah. Yeah. 2010, they yeah. would have been premiership teammates. Yeah. yeah. So I'm fairly sure he'd be pretty aware of the, you know, the oh, downfalls of Dane Beams. They'd all the be- other thing as well, like Daisy uses his influence for good as well like he goes and plays at lo- you know played yeah. at nil yeah. two weeks ago won yeah. a game their first game in like right. three years that's elite that's what you use your yeah these guys yeah. are not bad people but the decisions they're making yeah, they need to think ass. about what they're doing because if they knew they were destroying lives i'm not sure they would do it because i think it's a combination they're thinking about their pocket too much and then they're not fully aware of how bad it is but as steve said they're not fucking stupid so it's not good enough and like, and if they are Somehow ignorant to it, then that's not good enough. Yeah, well, that, then stop doing it. If you're, if you're ignorant yeah. to it and you're now you're learning about it, then stop. But, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the other thing we will obviously discuss, and I made a video about it, you know, earlier. Like the ads, like yeah. they are just... Genius. I, 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 I don't know how, and maybe, you know, you call it genius theory, how we've seen this for so long and we just think that everybody thinks the same way as us. But I don't know how you don't sit down and watch that, watch those ads and they don't make your blood boil. Like, yeah. I get so mad watching them and just thinking like these poor degenerate punters that that don't have an ability to stop betting right straight on and the phone. they watch it remember we spoke to the 18 year old guy on thursday yeah and he's like you know i'm getting worried that i'm going to bet too much you know i think about it all the time all my mates bet i'm only losing he's like i'm only losing like 100 200 bucks a week at the moment some of my mates are losing 500 bucks he's like i don't know how to stop and we asked him you know what what brings it on are you bored do you you know what do you think about it? and he's like man i'll be watching like before the footy and then a bet three six five ad will come on, or you know, Brownie will say that this multi looks good value, and he's like, and I can't stop myself from putting the bet Correct. on. Correct. And that's that would be the reality for so many punters. Yeah. And, and it's genius by sports bet, whatever they're running. You know, they're nah. I, you can't get that mad at sports bet, right? I do hate sports bet, but they're running a company. Right. They're just playing the game. Yeah, of course they well, are. But the people exactly. that are they're paying to do it for them, do the leg work, do the dirty work encourage people that to is lose. pulling the trigger exactly like you need to at what point is be at what yeah. point does the afl step in no the afl's fucking getting money from it oh 100 they're making yeah, money yeah. from it so shout out yeah. to gil mclaughlin if you i know you're resigning gone, now yeah but good work on uh doing the last however long you've been on board and letting this happen so shout out to well, exactly well, hey right. mac hey mac h mac his brother was actually talking about a follower who subbed to trumpy once on one of his mm, reports that's true these guys punt Gil I'm not sure Hamish does but fuck me like do something about it if you want to make a stand the next AFL guy think about not so much about the pockets and the revs for the AFL because the reality is if they take away that revenue from whatever they're getting the AFL is probably fucked and that's what you have to look at and that's what they're doing but what I'd like to say as well people might be watching this and be like oh at the end of the day it's your decision to gamble these guys are vulnerable people. 100%. Would you have the same, uh, I guess, sympathy or don't get triggered by someone standing outside a rehab center offering heroin to um, people coming out of rehab? Mm. 
it's you'd be like what the fuck what are they doing so it's the same thing so what why don't people a lot of people go oh leave them alone sports bets doing their job they're a business whatever um but at the end of the day like it's the same as that the same principle standing outside of rehab that's center. the thing it's like they're so clever in what they do sports bet in the way they market and the psychology it's behind it it's all like, playful and fun it's all play. they don't make it, it sound yeah. and they always have that you know or the end you know brownie would be like this is a great multi this is a great multi this you know 20 to 1 boost it up you know 20 bucks on it mm. there you go pay for your weekend oh and gamble responsibly yeah I'll gamble responsibly like yeah. at the end like come on like that is a fucking it's yeah. disgraceful isn't it but the thing is that people don't sort of realise that we I guess are trying to sort of highlight to people is that they are so good in what they do that they're getting the message across to people who A, shouldn't be hearing these messages and B, it's actually making, like it's impacting their behaviour. But people don't realise it. It's like subliminal messaging. Like they're like, I don't know whether they're attacking the subconscious, but like even like the subliminal message in that video that you talked about where they basically embarrass the guy for buying tips. Yeah. And you rightfully pointed out, I think rightfully pointed, I think we're all in agreement, rightfully pointed out that they embarrass that bloke for buying tips because sports bet know the people who are going to buy tips are more likely not going to lose as much. They might not win, but they won't lose as much because they've got the structure behind tips. Obviously, they'll win if they follow us. But people commented on that video that you did and said, oh, come on, mate, you're drawing a long bow here. That's that's not what they're saying. They're just having a bit of a laugh. You know, that's not true. Like that was sort of the response that some people were saying. It's like, this is the problem. They're subliminally telling you, don't buy tips. Don't yeah. bet smart. Don't bet with structure. Don't bet with discipline. And here you are thinking that that's not what they're telling you. Like that's the, yeah, that's, that's the part what's that so I don't clever. understand. Yeah. Like, how can you not watch that and go, yeah. "All right, these guys that make you know seventeen billion dollars a year off me losing are telling me not to buy tips." So I would instantly think, "Well, if there's one way I'm going to make money, yeah. it's by doing the exact opposite of what they're telling." Legit, me. they're so good at somehow telling you the message that they want, to, like, getting you to do what they want you to do, and thinking that they're doing you a favor and you can like, see that's how they do it but yeah. they, and they're so good at it that you think about like the, the the one that i come back to is like you look at all the comments look at all the comments to, to bet kingdom or whatever and all these people that are, think those ads are hilarious and that you know you must be fun at parties yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah oh yeah. geez i'd love to have a beer with you mate and it's like bro yeah. like if you like do you work for the bookies and if you don't <laughs> you are like you're actually a genuine clown yeah, yeah. you're supporting the bookies who literally want you to lose like what what, what actual planet do you want it's nuts. How, anyway, how they people side we'll take them. a bit of a yeah, pause, pause here. Cameras on three percent. Yeah, yeah, cop it. You got to live by your decisions, mate. <laughs> you got an opportunity to clean it up. It'd be interesting if like someone did eventually come out and be like, "All right, I made a mistake." A joke. No, no. Yeah, or like, like you know, like I, I could see someone like Kane Corns doing that. Yeah, like, sorry guys, I'm like, moving like, away from Ben. Yeah, no, like literally, I'd like, get so like, much it respect. Stu- it was a stupid call. Yeah. Like, yeah, like in hindsight, it was something that I shouldn't do. Yeah, it would take the moral high ground. Yeah, just like yeah, move on. I, I feel like he's the kind of guy that would do that. So yeah, yeah, I'd love for him. No, to he's that. admitted he's wrong before. He, all the time he does. Like, he but makes that, a call about he's, a player. He's elite. Jer- like whatever, whatever you want to call him, he, he does it for bait. And of he's. But it's I rate Kane Corns. Everyone hates him, but I don't have any issues with him because he just speaks his mind. And he just he, he likes to stir the pot, Correct. but it's just like why are you doing that? Yeah. Since we've uh we've all calmed down now, um, Steve's <laughs> taking a deep breath. Uh, I thought we would just go over quickly before we wrap everything up. Um, some of the more common questions that pop through in the DMs. It might help somebody that's watching this for the first time or has thought about sending us a message. So the first question I've got for you, Steve, is what the, the I reckon this is the most common actually is what do I do with deposit bonuses and do I use them when opening up new accounts? for the system yeah so very good question so just to confirm to anyone who doesn't know what a deposit bonus is so a deposit bonus is basically when you sign up to a bookie for the first time one of the corporate bookmakers um they won't advertise it i don't think i don't think they're allowed they're to allowed advertise to, as yeah. an incentive so they're not allowed to advertise that if you deposit 50 dollars, they'll give you 50 dollars in bonus bets um there's a new law stopping them from doing that but they still do it anyway so after you sign up after it's you, fine. yeah after play you on. sign up yeah it's play on um so they're just because i mean back in the day it was pretty ridiculous it was like yeah deposit a hundred dollars get like 500 in bonus bets even worse probably Bro, back we, back in the day a thousand thousand yeah we had five thousand dollar um ned's ones was that um, like to, for a for a new account it was an affiliate brand. doing that, yeah. So yeah, a special yeah, code affiliates. that you had to put in. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. that's a we, we don't want to go on too long. No. But anyway, so basically when you sign up with a bookie, you can get you know deposit offers where most of them will be around sort of that $100 mark, I yeah. suppose. Deposit, I know Ladbrokes do deposit $50. $50 or something. They do, they do a couple you can choose. It's like yeah. deposit 
250, get 100 in bonus. Deposit 250, get 250 in bonus. Anyway, so that's what a deposit bonus is. Um, and I guess when people sign up, obviously when people sign up to the system, you need sort of a lot of accounts. So people will be opening up new accounts when they first sign up with us. And people get a lot of these deposit bonuses because they're making brand new accounts. They're getting these accounts set up so that they can use to follow the system. And they're getting all these bonus bets. Um, and I guess one thing that we talk about um, and one thing that's critical for sustainability is the first sort of two, three weeks of a brand new account is don't place any promo bets. And I think people are getting confused as to what a promo bet is and yeah. what a bonus bet is. Um, so look, to answer the question, the question straight up is, can you use these deposit bonuses? Absolutely. Use yeah. these depo- it's deposit It's a good way to build bonuses. your bankroll. It's a good way to build your bankroll. Don't blindly gamble them. Turn them over. Practice two-way dutching. Practice three-way dutching. Yeah. Hustle Squad free course. We'll chuck a video in the description of this on Spotify and YouTube. Yeah. Just watch that video. So basically, two-way dutching, three-way dutching, or bonus turnover, yeah. sort of the, the umbrella term of it all, is a critical element of the system. It's a critical element of Hustle Squad. It's a critical element to beat the bookies um, and you know lock in that edge that you have over the bookies. So, so basically getting these deposit bonuses to begin with is a really good practice. Um, as you said, it's a good way to build your bankroll because it's if you... It's a very easy way to do that. It's very easy. Yeah, there's probably about 5K worth of signups yeah. across the board. However, don't get too caught up in chasing deposit offers because like uh, like we said, we want to make sure that we're prioritizing long-term sustainability um, instead of chasing signups and, and I'd say everywhere. for most people that they come across, they probably have three or four bookies that they yes. mainly use, two, two to four maybe, and they need to open up three to five more to have a sustainable yeah. amount to follow that system. Just say on average, they get $100 bonus per account. They're going to get 500 bucks worth of bonus, yeah, right? Which they can turn three, up 350 bucks cash whatever. for free. Risk-free, yeah. great way to start. You, you build your bankroll. Yeah. I think the second question that I have that follows on from that, I think you answered that really well with how they should use them. They should use them. They should cash in on them. Use them, you know, sparingly, but do it properly. Good way to practice. Good way to build your bankroll. The second question that usually follows on from that, when I do tell them this is what you should do with them, is what is the minimum bankroll that someone should have to follow the service? Look, this is something that we've been asked from day dot. Um, initially, we used to say a thousand dollars is probably not the minimum, I reckon, but that's more of an ideal starting to get capital. the most out of it. To get the most out of it with a with a thousand dollars, you can probably start on a fifteen dollar unit size to begin yeah, with. Ten to, 10 to 15, fifteen, which is a great unit size to learn, one but to also one to make percent. profit like yeah. in your in your first month. I reckon you could probably follow with five hundred dollars betting capital. Um, I'd say if there was an absolute bare minimum lower range, you could probably start with five hundred dollars. And with five hundred dollars, you're going to start on a five dollar unit size. I'd reckon. Um, and as we've pointed out earlier in the podcast, it's fine because you're not there in the first few weeks to make money. Yeah. Um, you're there to learn the processes, understand the structure, understand the discipline, understand what is required of you in order to follow the system completely correctly and to maximize your profits. And then as well as that, if you have $500 with these sign up bonuses to begin with, your, your bankroll is going to go to $750 basically within Pretty the quickly. first two weeks. Yeah. Um, so, you know, from there you've paid off your first basically three months worth of sub fees um, and then you're, what was one of our favorite punters? You're playing for free or we're, we're in the, in the green or something. So we're playing for free now after that. So, um, yeah, that's where I'd probably stay. I'd definitely lean towards having, you know, closer to a thousand, um, just because you do need a bit of extra, there's going to be times where, you know, one account gets drained. So you need to top up another account. Yeah. You also want capital in your accounts to ensure that you have enough to hedge bonus bets. Correct. Um, so the more you've got, basically the more flexibility you've got. Most of the people that start on five are either the most skeptical or the people that are... Minimum bankrupt. Yeah, that literally only have 500 bucks, right? So yeah. the, the reason that some people might just start on a $5 unit size and just be happy to allocate 500 bucks is because they truly don't think that the system will make yeah. profit. And they're like, fuck it. It was 100 bucks to join for the month. You said, if you don't make me profit in the month, you're going to give me my money back. So I'll follow for five dollar units until I either believe you guys or I think it's a crock of shit. Yeah, obviously Which we once, embrace that. Yeah, of course. And once yeah. they follow for a couple of weeks, well, you go, all right, you know, I can allocate a thousand bucks to this service. Yeah. I'm going to start doing it on ten. This year, guy did that today. I was talking to him. He goes, I want to allocate five hundred. I'm like, all right. He's had no accounts ever, never placed a bet in his life. I'm like, all right, you're faced with a decision here. You've got the opportunity to make probably two or three k just off signups and get your accounts ready. So you can either come across to Platinum and set it up first, or you can, if you have more capital, that is, you don't want to be going to Platinum with less than a k. But he said, all right, I can invest more now that I've spoken to you guys for the last three days. I've realized that you guys are legit. Okay, now I'm going to invest a thousand. What do I do? You need to make sure. Just to clarify, this is going sort of into like giving away too much information, but you want to be splitting your bonuses as well because. 
like you said, if you get stuck where one account needs to hedge three hundred dollars, but you mm. only have five hundred, all your money's in one spot. It's not a good thing because then you have to withdraw, which we want to avoid doing. Um, mm. And instead of that, split your bonus into an amount where it's not going to affect your bankroll. Take up a huge or half a chunk of it or whatever. You want to make sure that you're considering all this. And obviously, DM us if you want any more questions. We'll, we'll cover that in the new how to follow video as well. But yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I, I think just adding to that, if you're someone coming across and you're losing massively, even just being in our service without making any money, if you're following with a $5 unit size, I mean, reality is you could follow with a $1 unit size. You're not going to make significant profit for the month. You're going to make like 30 bucks a month, right? But if you're if you being in our service costs you hundred dollars for that first month and it saves you two grand because you normally lose five hundred a week, bro, that's a fucking plus nineteen hundred for the month. So you need to consider that too. So five hundred dollars minimum, yes, to get the most out of it. Probably more likely to be a thousand to get actually something significant out of it. But it, you need to consider that too and and progress along that over the next three six months and then you start to get your rewards later. So yeah. I don't know if you guys want to add anything I, to that. I guess for me, there's like. I don't want to sound, you know, I don't know, like I'm potentially desensitized to money by saying this, but for me, there's no real difference for someone. There's no real point for someone signing up and joining on the difference between a $1 unit size and a $10 unit size. You know what I mean? Like if you're following within, you know, under a 10 or 10 or under unit size, you may as well follow with a $1 unit size in my opinion. Yeah. Because the only difference is over a week is maybe $70 profit. Um, and so that's why I don't want to, because $70 is still a nice amount of profit, but because I know how capable the profits can be mm-hmm. or sort of the extent to how much you can make in a week, which, you know, we're talking sort of, you know, five hundred, a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars a week potentially. Yeah. Obviously, you know, now the we're top getting guys are doing that. that's what the top yeah. guys are doing. And so for me, I wouldn't be personally worried about making seventy dollars in the first week. I'd be happy to just make ten dollars in the first week but and understand the whole process, yeah. knowing what is you know, six months down Correct. the track. Um, but that's the decision that the people that come in and allocate 500 bucks or are going to do a $5 unit size, they know and they've had conversations mm. with us and they know that the first three weeks or first month, they sure the system will profit and they might make their 25 units off on five bucks, whatever, but they're not there to make money in the first month. They're either there because they're skeptical or they're like, you know, I want to do this properly, understand it. And once I know how it works, I'll, I'll go up to $10, $15 unit sizes. I've got the bankroll to do it, but I don't want to do it yet until yeah. I know. And we, and, and you know, you can listen to all our voice messages where we always err on the side of caution. Like we want you guys to do it with less money to start. Even if you've got a $10,000 bankroll, start on $20 yeah. units, start don't, on $15 units. You can't units. start with more than 25. Nail, once yeah. you understand how it all works, then of course, go, go, go nuts. Go to $25 unit sizes, whatever. If your bankroll can support that, that's fine. But until you know exactly what's required of you, the smaller unit size is definitely recommended by us yeah. and we'll always tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, we're not here for you to chase profit in the first month. Well, we don't give a fuck about that. Th- those yeah. guys I think are the most likely to jump off though because of the fact that they're probably not going to get a huge amount of profit straight up Yeah. because of the fact that they're starting with a lower unit size. But this is what people will now start to understand and we're seeing it already. They don't, they don't want to chase the profit because we're drumming it into them that the first month is more about learning than profit. And once they pass that, then they get the rewards later. Mm. But it's up to them to stick around. Um, yeah, and the learning is there. Like it's, it, we we talk about there is a lot of learning. We've got currently. What what do you reckon? We've probably got an hour and a half worth of content currently as it is right yeah. now. But it's going to be probably closer to two yeah. and a half hours. I reckon once we get all yeah. the new how to follow video, the new sustainability video. So it's all there, and people actually understand. They're like. Oh fuck! All right, yeah, I do have to go through all of this. Um, maybe what they are saying is, you know, maybe correct. Well, that's why people we encourage people to sign up earlier in the week because yeah. ninety plus percent of our units are now out later on a Saturday because Wednesdays have got quieter. So don't sign up on fucking Friday night or Saturday morning expecting to then go and follow the tip seamlessly on a mm. Saturday because you're only going to have two three hours. Well, sign up on Monday. Around, yeah, well Saturday morning, Tuesday. We're, Steve and I are potentially running around like headless chook, yeah, making sure that we message now, so. every single new sub Correct. and be like, mm. mate, do not bet. Like, don't bet today. Nah. You've joined an hour before the first tip. We've got an hour and a half of videos. But they're they're going to gonna follow and they're going to fuck it up. Yeah, they're correct. too impatient. They're not there for the right reason. And I feel like we're trying to drill that into even when we post, you know, stories saying we're tipping today or whatever, yeah. we're tipping tomorrow. You know, get in now because you've got you've got an hour and a half of video to watch, and you might not even be able to follow tomorrow because you might have two accounts. No accounts. Yeah. yeah. A guy said recently um, in the chat, he said Monday's a really good trial run. Uh, sorry, Wednesday's, Wednesday's a really good trial yeah, run, and I agree. Yeah, I reckon Monday is probably the best day to get in. Gives yourself two days to go through the content. And then on Wednesday, it's hard to fuck up on Wednesday in terms of not knowing how to follow. Because it's yeah. one tip per race. Because it's one tip per race and it's probably two, maybe four races for the day. Yeah. So 
You've you usually got 30 to 40 minutes between races yeah. as well, so you're not overwhelmed. Whereas if you join Saturday morning and then you've got Eagle Farm, Caulfield, Randwick, Shit's you know, going you've got on. three races in 12 minutes. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of moving parts. It's hectic. It can be pretty, can be pretty full on. I remember just following the system in that time after doing it for six, 12 months, you get some days where it's three, four tracks in the space of literally 15 minutes and it's chaos. Diff- it's different bookies. Some, yeah. you know, then some tracks don't actually have promos that you think, you know, you exactly. make a mistake, you place a bet without promo insurance. Yeah. Like it's very easy to do. And yeah, that, like JP said, and like we always say, if you're losing on the punt and if you see this and you're losing on the punt and you want to keep betting and you don't think you can stop, if you follow the system for one month and learn, you know, what's involved, you're not going to lose that whole month because if you do it properly, you're not going to lose any money for the whole month, right? So even if you spend a hundred bucks on the subscription, think about that. You spend a hundred dollars and you're not going to lose a cent for the whole month. You might not even follow the tips for the whole month, but you're not going to lose a cent. You're also going to be like, holy shit, I can bet this way sustainably and make money. And then in six months time, you'll be on a $30, $40 unit size Mm. and you'll be making $1,500 a month tax-free from betting. So like, I feel like there's going to be so many people that watch this cut this up, put it on TikTok as a little snippet. If you are somebody that's losing every single month betting, yeah. spend $100, go through two and a half hours of our content, sit in the system for a month and watch how it works, and I guarantee you that you won't leave. You yeah, won't because leave. these there, there's not it's not just you in there. There's 1,900 people in the free chat as well. So even if you're not even want to sub, sit in the free chat and watch the people make money every week or month, and then you'll be like, what? why aren't I doing this? Yeah, there'll be like five or 10 questions a week now. Someone saying, hey guys, I'm thinking about joining. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about subscribing. Is this profitable? Yeah. How do you guys go with it? And then you just see 10 subs, send a message yeah. instantly. I think you wrote last night, great to see this conversation or great to see this chat. Yeah. All those answers are spot on. Like, Yeah, people answered. are answering the question for us. Yeah. Reality is, even if you jump in our free chat now, you're getting a voice recording from um, Steve personally. Um, and then you get an opportunity to get some some questions to us. So um, we had a losing day on Saturday, if you're watching this. What was it, June 11? Um, minus 8.15 units. Uh, is there anything you guys wanted to say about that in terms of, I don't know, anything? I oh, will obviously, um, people will see soon. I think we put a bit of stuff on our stories around. Um, we wanted to give people a bit more of an insight into, you know, we do get a lot of people like, oh, you just send out tips, you don't do a whole lot. And we've obviously touched on the personalization of how we help everyone through the process. But... What we thought we would do on Saturday is we filmed a, we actually filmed a vlog. So we got, um, you know, our, our film guy in who helps us with the podcast and stuff. And we're like, can you just come over and record us doing a normal Saturday? And it's obviously not every Saturday because majority of the time it's done at home on our own or by one person. But we're like, fuck it, let's get the whole team together. Let's do a proper morning. Yeah. So we literally vlogged the whole thing. So we have the whole day yeah. from start to finish. We've got, you know, videos of us speaking to subscribers, videos of us putting stories on our Instagram, videos of us making the promo list, videos of us actually tipping. going through our data and tipping, videos yeah. of us watching the races, videos of us, you know, after the race is not really too fussed about, you know, we're having a down day. We only had seven winners for the whole day, but the whole thing's filmed. So we're going to put it together. We're going to put it on, um, we'll put it on our socials. I think it'll be a nice insight for people to see what actually goes on behind the scenes yeah. and to see, you know, the value in the subscription and the time and effort that we put into running our service. So, um, if you are watching this, obviously you're at the end of the podcast. We're about to wrap it up, but I think we should do like we did last podcast. Obviously, we did piss ten. Um, got a couple of people come through with a message yeah. for piss ten. So, what we'll do is if you do send us a DM on, we'll do a DM, or should we just do a well, promo DM? Code? But also we'll put the promo code on Stripe. So if you write vlog ten, you'll yeah. get ten percent off yep. a monthly sub or more yep. as a once off. Or should we make it? Forever. Forever. No, forever. forever. Make it forever. If they, so if they end up making it to the end of this, yeah. This you'll is not be forever be paying $90 else. a month. Yeah. I think that's 10% off, whatever. Yeah, with the full um, guarantee. And we'll well. also post the vlog in the description of this YouTube. And if you're watching it on or listening to it on Spotify, go into the description. You can watch the vlog. We'll cut it down to what, fucking five to 15 minutes or whatever, just to make it nice and compressed. But yeah. yeah. But I think that'll be a good insight for people to see what yeah, goes exactly. on behind the scenes and actually understand that it's not simply just no nah, you know we're us, not here to fuck spiders just you know checking yeah. the market mover on sports bet 30 seconds before the before the race sending it yeah. out and then calling it a day so yeah um this was i reckon this is our best podcast so far yeah um, did you have anything to finish off with um steve mike pence whatever you call yourself i don't think i did no nah. all right molly's had enough yeah the dog's Marley's asleep snoring, yeah. snoring ahead off, um so. We'll leave it there, guys. So if you have a question, DM. Every single bit of link, free cost to Hustler, sign up to the system will all be in both description on YouTube and Spotify. Make sure you follow. Give us a five-star rating on Spotify. Share it to a mate who 
I don't know, might be losing on the punt. You might be able to help him. <laughs> Share it to uh, Brendan Goddard and, and all those guys. We'd love to hear from them. Um, Chompers yeah. Jones. TJ Chompers. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. See you Show yourself. <laughs> See you guys see next you time. Guys. Cheers, guys. The microphones, everything's on, yeah? <coughs> yeah, they're all good. <coughs> <coughs> oh, oh. And fucking bye. Fucking hell, that was a sneeze. <coughs> Alright, we good to go? I'm gonna yeah. start in like three seconds. Shut that door. Oh, fuck me. <sighs> Mate, you can't shut that door. What? That's off the rails. No, nah, the, the couch hit it before, that's why. If it's off, if it's fucked, leave it's it. It's full off the rails. Look at the angle compared to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I've so almost fucking, that's almost fallen down on it me. It can't go anywhere, the thing's in front of it. If you well, can't fix up. it, leave it, nah. It doesn't fine. look bad in there. Nah, we'll, we'll edit it out. It's genuine, like, passion when we swear. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, fucking love swearing. Steve we was going off. off. Oh, fuck fucked it, man. Mate, the, blur, was... the blur monster's going to get Wait, fucking a fair come, run. We're coming, we're coming <laughs> to get you. <laughs> if you're an ex AFL, fucking come and go. Sitting there like. No, but like, that's not good enough. Yeah, fucking listen. I fucking, I'll message myself. I know, I sort of realised after what I said, I was no, that's like. That's elite. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. No, that's elite. Telling him that's elite. I was like, Steve's about, about to go viral. Fuck it up, man. Fuck them. This fucking random. We're giving it to 17 billion a year, so fuck them. I felt like I sounded like my mum then. Like she would have like, oh, you haven't cleaned your room? That's not fucking good then. Fuck it then. <laughs> <laughs> fucking oh, fuck it <laughs> Fuck it, if they want to do that, they can cop it. And, and they think, they, they join, right? And they're like, oh, is that camera all good? Someone just made a noise. Mm. We'll stop, I can it go could again. be full. Uh -oh, that's your chest. Oh. What is it? I don't know, it's very well. Did it die? Is it off? Oh, here we go. Classic comment. Tough shit. Get over it. It legit says gamble responsibly. Don't let it play exactly you. What I just said. If people can't help themselves, there's deposit limits. Helplines. Grow up your softie. The helplines don't grow up like your softie. My laptop's full. Oh my god, his <laughs> SD's full. His seventh laptop's full. <laughs> He's got 20 SD cards full. What's this? Just get a terabyte hard drive, man. They're like 20 bucks. Yeah, I've got heaps of them, but they're all old. <laughs> heaps of them. You got four of them. They're all full. God. What the fuck? You can borrow one. Oh, you haven't cleaned your room? That's not fucking good, man. What the fuck was that? Is that English? Who said that? This is the fucking man. This is the fucking man. You haven't cleaned your room? That's not fucking good, man. Fuck them, man. Fuck them, man. Fuck them, if they want to do that, they can cop it until they... Don't work tomorrow. Six. What time do you go to bed? Nah, she's fine, man. She's fine. She's fine, mate. <laughs> <laughs> mate, this... Yeah, so JP will be up till four fucking yelling at something or recording yeah, rinsing people. Like, oh, like, oh, I haven't done, I haven't done late nights. Like, start till like one o'clock. I'm like, I have work. Not one, relax, like 11. <laughs> yeah, like midnight. <laughs> Let's watch a movie. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help. If I got up that early, I'd go to bed now. <laughs> have you been enjoying Narcos? Yeah, it's good. What first one are you watching? You're watching the first full blown one in, in yeah, Medellin, yeah? My question is because we accidentally went on. Is someone still using your fucking account? Man, I reckon there's five. Bit, I don't yeah, know who it is. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. They're watching fucking. Something was up there. I was going to ask if it was. Nah. Do you watch Game of Thrones? Nah. nah. You, wouldn't be, first, you wouldn't be able to watch that. I watched the first two episodes. I actually liked it. But when I saw um, someone no, rude your sister, then, someone rude sister, then I was like, nah, this is not. Oh, mate, that's the whole. Fun. That's this <laughs> best part. There's 10 <laughs> seasons of that. Well, they're not actually brother and sister, so it's fine. Bro, I would love to be in your brain. The amount of thoughts that just fly through, just like off on a tangent. <laughs> Bang, Insta. TikTok. Now you're on Insta. Fuck <laughs> me. <What? laughs> we need to change the battery, not this. Oh, yeah. you're kidding. <laughs> right now. Ever. How long? I don't know. It just has a cross to it. Surely we just pump out the last five minutes and be out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>